Taking a deep breath in Kingston a few weeks ago wasn't very easy as a mysterious odor permeated the air. The smell that came over the carpet area and, and the air around the Alaspan, that was um, a particularly frightening situation because it just sort of appeared out of blue, you know, and um, that was primarily due to um, stagnation and hydrogen sulfide buildup. And, you know, hydrogen sulfide is called rotten eggs. However, with the hustle and bustle of city life, many Jamaicans don't often stop to think about the quality of the air they breathe on a daily basis. Consultant pulmonologist at the University Hospital of the West Indies, Dr. Charlton Colley, says there's usually uncertainty about general air quality in Jamaica, as monitoring and the release of findings aren't constant. We don't tend to monitor how much um, particles are in the air, etc and how many parts of gases are in the air on a routine basis. But of course, when the dump is burning, everybody gets a monitor and, and they monitor for the same um, nitrous oxide, ozone, sulfur dioxide, and um, you know, all those harmful gases that can affect the rest of our system, which is the, all of these are airborne and you nail them and they're gonna have effects on the lung. The lung specialist admits that air quality monitoring usually increases when there are incidents of concern, but a structured monitoring program could go a far way in helping to allay respiratory concerns. Resources to monitor outdoor um, air um, indices um, is going to take quite a bit of resources to on a routine basis. So usually you find, in, I know in America, the EPA, um, for example, monitors during the times when you have fog and when you have um, a lot of um, you know, humidity in the air where the air becomes stagnant and the pollutants become concentrated. So you find that, for example, in the summer months when it's very hot and humid in America, this when you get a lot of problems and a lot of monitor. They don't monitor on a routine basis. They monitor when they know the, the, the climate is right or the conditions are right. Head of the Public Health School at the University of Technology, Professor Winston Davidson, says despite having the legal framework in place to ensure the air we breathe is relatively safe, the capacity to follow through on these laws isn't there. We have to uh, uh, put in place the laboratory to do the necessary testing. We have to test more of the, of the stuff than we do. We have to test more often. We have to put out the, have the public health inspectors going around to identify the different uh, uh, things that are violating, etc. We do not have that capacity yet. Of course there can be violation there, and that is the weakness of the system. He points out that coupled with the industrial pollutants coming from industries such as bauxite, petroleum processing and cement manufacturing, there are now more mobile sources of air pollution in Jamaica. In 1993, we had 170,000 motor vehicles uh, in Jamaica. Then by 1999, it doubled, almost doubled, to 350,000. And then by 2003, it, you added another 100,000. 100, it means that approximately, we have had approximately a two and a half times increase in the number of motor vehicles on the road. And that now has generated large numbers of toxic material in the atmosphere. The main, thing, main gas that's emitted from uh, um, exhaust is nitrogen di dioxide. Now, nitrogen dioxide, usually you can't smell it too much, you know. And a lot of it is really absorbed in the upper airway. That means it doesn't don't get down to the lung a lot. So a lot of it is the nose and around the back of the throat, you know. It's, it's a very absorbable gas. So it tends not to cause a lot of chronic lung disease. It tends to be an acute situation where you, you know, your eyes get red, your nose get red, watery and stuff like that. Whereas nitro, nit nitrous dioxide, that's, what, that's the one that emits from the exhaust of like buses, for example. Mm -hmm. But it tends to cause more acute problems. You know? But of course, if you have chronic lung disease, then you get about an acute exacerbation of whatever that chronic lung disease is. So if you have like asthma, you get, you get an acute exacerbation of asthma. Just mean a worsen of your asthma, or worsen of your COPD. With some corporate area residents still resorting to burning garbage, more pollutants are released into the air. When you burn garbage in your backyard, and you create, for example, some unstable chemicals known as dioxins and furans, 
these now having effect on human tissue having gone into the lung because the lung is not fine enough to filter these things out, out creating benzene or, or you have a volatile uh, uh, kind of between benzene which is carcinogenic or a whole host of chemicals that lead to cancer. Dr. Colley agrees that there are major concerns associated with garbage burning and the effects on lungs. He points out that the regular fires at the Riverton City dump puts those exposed to the smoke at great respiratory risk. The last big one we saw was at the burner dump when a lot of people had respiratory problems, especially worsening of their asthma and worsening of their COPD. And at that time, you know, we had people, no fatality, but near fatality. Um, especially at the university here. We saw about two or three people who went directly to the intensive care unit from respiratory failure, from the worsening of their asthma. So at those times now, then, you know, everybody's on high alert.